Don't bring me down. Number ten. Was it number ten? No, no. Yeah, yeah. They made it. They they kind of blew their chances. Um, phonogram or whatever they were called, because they put it out as it was going up the charts. They put it out as an EP, so they split the sales, and the EP went to number three or four in the EP charts. But they split the sales between. You know, they competed with themselves, really. It could have been higher, I think. Well, you've been on a few labels, uh, a Motown label. In fact, you've had some really prominent fans. Dave Gilmore, we'll talk about more in a minute, and The Stones. And uh, Jimmy Page, obviously, put his money where his mouth was. He signed And, and Robert, and, yep, yeah. Yeah, and, and Robert. Peter Grant. And David Bowie was your fan <laughs> as well, wasn't he? <laughs> yes, David, yeah. Now, you tell us uh, why he... It had your phone number and why it said God next to it. It was just very embarrassing because um, I didn't mean to embarrass him, but I wasn't going to shout my number out amongst other kids who were standing around. And he had my number, but I, I moved back to my mum or something. I changed it. So I said, well, give us your book. And he didn't want to give me the book. You know, there's funny little phone books we all have with little lines in, with the alphabet down one side. Index. And I took it off him. And when I looked, I realised well, he was completely blushing. And it just said, my old number, and it said G-O-D above it. So I didn't say that, I just wrote my new number in and gave it back to him, shut the book and gave it back to him. He, he also covered a couple, <laughs> did you, you know, flattering, he covered a couple of your songs, didn't he, on the pin-ups album? That's right, yeah, he covered uh, Rosalind and Don't Bring Me Down. But, Oh You Pretty Things, a song he... Apparently, yeah, I mean, I, I never spoke to him about that, whether that was about us. But um, I, I think I read somewhere in a book saying that he dedicated that, you know, brought that back up as one of his sort of, uh, I mean, influences, bad behaviour, I suppose. Where did you get your name from? I know that was from an old uh, blues song, wasn't it? Well, it's it? Bo Diddley. Right. And when we were art school, I think our first art school dance when we were really amateur, I think it was probably three quarters Bo Diddley songs. And... He was probably the first person that kind of blew my socks off. I didn't even want to be a musician. I wanted to paint. And then I kind of got caught up with Dick Taylor and, and Keith Richards in the cloakroom mm -hmm. in our breaks. At playing. school. And, and they sort of, Dick said, why don't you sing? I said, well, I can't. I don't sing. Anyway, I got drawn into it. Um, and Dick always said, when the pretty thing started, I wanted to be a, the other guitarist. And he said, uh, we told you we were looking for a singer, but we never were. So this sort of me waiting to be replaced so I could play guitar was never going to happen. <laughs> Dick said, you know, that was just a, a can't con you to sing. So I got conned into, into being the singer of The Pretty Things. I don't think you objected. No, no, I don't. You know, but that's, I didn't have the ego drive or to me it was I was just helping them while we were jamming a song and yeah. learning the words. I got mix... Um, Jaggers, he had this kind of um, Pittman shorthand uh, notebook with every lyric you could think of in it, which was really helpful. So um, how did you develop a, a stage presence then, if you were God. reticent? Mentioning Jagger, I mean, that's the ultimate showman, isn't it? Oh, he was the ultimate showman. I mean, he was the yeah. ultimate frontman, I think. Yeah. Um, well, I didn't have any kind of act on moves. I mean, I just reacted to what I was singing. I think, I can't remember who it was, some leading journalist reviewed a show and said that I was like a demented gorilla on stage or something. Oh, demented orangutan. That was my stage uh, stage act. Um, what happened in, uh, talking of madness, what happened in um, New Zealand then for you to be, who gets banned from New Zealand? What did you do? <laughs> well, what, what didn't we do? I think it's more the, more the... What, TVs from hotel windows? and? Well, no, it wasn't. They didn't have TV then. Right. <laughs> it was like throwing a tr radio out of the window. Um, and probably sort of... Um, An Ida down. Riding a bicycle into a swimming... Into a, into a puddle, probably was more like it. No, we had a lot of... Um, because we were going on a kind of city hall tour, we were following people like the, uh, the band of the Royal Scotch Guards some operatic person. And when we would get to some theatres, the jobs were locked us out because they said you will sully this wonderful musical venue with your presence. 